Wow, that was great. Watching you guys, it was really kind of cool seeing you all coming together. That's very nice. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Unitarian Universalist Church. We are a welcoming congregation where we strive to transform ourselves and the world through love, wonder, and connection. My name is Beth. Mackenzie Moore, and I use she, her pronouns. I serve on the worship committee. I also help with the play reading, leader of the play reading committee. We're having auditions next week after church, and we, and also the chair of the music and arts. Whether you're here for the first time or the thousands time, welcome. Whatever you are facing in your life, welcome. This is a place where we try our best to be real to one another, to get through hard things together, and to remind ourselves and one another of the values that ground and center us, that motivate and move us. Whoever you are, whatever your faith journey, whomever you love, you are welcome here. We welcome all who seek to know the sacred and all who seek to make the world more just. Our commitment is to be together in covenant, to live out our values, to work towards together towards our mission. These are what make a church. These are what make our church. The mission of this church is to transform ourselves and the world through love, wonder, and connection. Please rise in body or spirit to join me in our affirmation of who this community is, beginning with the all-important word, love is the message of this church, and service is our way. This is our great covenant together to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Let's join in singing our opening hymn, Our World is One World, number 134 in the Gray Hymnal. Join me in our chalice lighting words from Deborah Falk as, uh, let's see, Beth will light our chalice. Of course.
course, there we go, slide. The chalice lit among us is a beacon, a beacon of hope in a world in crisis, a beacon of possibility in manifest in community, a beacon of warmth through our interconnections, a beacon of light illuminating our shared wisdom, a beacon of connection by our being together. Will you join me now in prayer and meditation? Find a comfortable place for your body, whatever that may be. Pay attention to your breathing. Maybe find your center. Take a moment to just be. Today, in our prayer, let us hold the people in Gaza and Israel as today marks the four-month anniversary of the Hamas attack, the beginning of terrible, terrible war. Let us hold also all those still grieving the loss of their loved ones in Baltimore. And let us remember and celebrate with those who are nearing the end of their Ramadan uh, remembrance. This world and all of us people are interconnected. All of these joys and sorrows tie us together. Our breath is their breath. We are all united. Let us remember that as we go into the world. Amen. Today is the first day of an experiment of adding a little more ritual to our service. Ritual is an important part of how we are human, be it the ritual of brushing our teeth twice a day, or having a family dinner every week, or even coming to church on Sunday. We humans like to do things on repeat. When we come together here and practice rituals together, it helps us to make meaning, connect with ourselves, and with community. So I hope you will participate in this as fully as you can. This month, we're holding three centers of connection. The first is our usual candles of joys and sorrows here. Second, we'll have stones of hopes and fears at this tall station in the center. And third, we'll have the tree of interdependence. You can see the tree is not quite mounted on the wall yet, but it will be soon. And the leaves that we will be adding to this tree are on the table here in the front. Over the month, we'll see it transform from this bare winter tree into a lovely spring tree with green leaves. So you can interact with these altars in a couple of ways. First, you can raise your hand with the number one if you wanna have a candle lit for you. Number two, if you wanna have a stone of hope or fear placed for you. And number three, if you wanna have a leaf and a pencil brought to you so you can add it to the leaf of the tree. So if you're on Zoom, you can add your name and which one you would like to have done for you in the chat box. And if you write the message of how you are interconnected, this is the message we'll write on our tree. How are you interdependent with others on the leaf? And Charlene will bring it forward for you. 
And finally, once that's all going, we will uh, be able to rise and move to the station you would like to do. Now, if you're doing candles of joys and sorrows, you'll come over here on this aisle. If you're doing um, the stones, you'll come down this side of the aisle and you'll go back that way. And if you're coming to write a, on the leaf, you'll come around the side over there to write your leaves. Okay, now that I've given you way more instructions than you can remember, <laughs> we'll start with those who would like to raise their hand. So if you would like to have a candle lit for you, raise the number one finger. If you would like to have a stone dropped for you, raise the number two. And if you'd like to have a leaf, if you'd like to have a leaf brought to you, please raise the number three. Number three. I see one there. Great. Now hopefully those online are getting their names into the chat box. So if you would like to light a candle for yourself, you may rise and form a line with Beth right there. If you would like to do a stone, come this way and form a line. And if you would like to write on a leaf about your interdependence, go around the outside. So we'll light one final candle and place one final stone for all the joys and sorrows, hopes and fears that remain in our hearts, unspoken, unshared, but held together by all of us. you to sing our sung prayer response there is a love Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
missed or not, I don't know. Miss Adina is not with us today. She is um, on her way slash already in Puerto Rico for a amazing gift of a time with other people of color, people of indigenous backgrounds who are religious professionals who get to go and be together for a week of sustaining care and um, worship and being together. So we are very grateful that she gets to be there. So instead of me reading a story to you, um, I found a read along for this amazing story online and we will watch it. It's called The Invisible String. It's about how we are all always connected. working on it. So it's a story and we'll see it really soon. There it is. And I'll get the sound on. And we'll get the sound on. Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared, mom said. You know we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there, asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you could feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel a tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our heart, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string, Liza asked. She sure does, said mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean, asked Jeremy. Yes, mom said, even there. Or a mountain climber, even there. A dancer in France, even there. A jungle explorer, even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said mom. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like what movie to see, or what game to play in the back seat, or what time to go to bed, oh, that's right, you two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have, and all the strings their friends have, and their friends have, and their friends have, until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see, no one is ever alone.
No one? No one. Okay, yep. yep. No one is ever alone. And uh, now it's time for our friends to go down to their classes. And it's going to be a fun art day. I hope you all have a good time. Porter is going to be doing some fun stuff. So let's sing as they go. We hold you in our arms as we go, as we go, and our heart be as peace as you go, to nurture the spark of your precious life. We hold you in our love as you Please join me in our offering and acknowledging all the ways we give to this church and to the world. We give because this is our church and we value what it does for us, to us, and through us to our community and the world. May there be an offering to sustain and grow the life and mission of this church inside and outside our walls. May we give in love and hope. Thank you for your offering and all the ways you give your life and ministry with your time, talent, trust, and treasure. <laughs> Together our gifts allow us to expand and strengthen the tapestry of love, wonder, and connection that blesses this church and transforms us and the world. Our reading this morning is from Ross Gay, from his book, Inciting Joy, chapter three. At some point, I realized that one seed, let's say one tiny collared seed, the size of a freckle, smaller than a mole, could after it went to flower and set seed, produce maybe 1,000 more seeds, which could make 1,000 more collard plants, which would overfill the plates at the biggest collard green and cornbread party you might ever think to have. I mean, they would overfill the plates and the Tupperware, and if those 1, thousand collard plants went to seed, each of them making 1,000 seeds. How big is that table? And that table is built by, lest we forget, whoever decided a given plant was worth tasting 
worth keeping, hardiness, tradition, beauty, love, taste, and so saved that seed and brought them to us, which the best catalogs do a good job of explaining. Just the other day, my mother told me her mother always grew a hearty pinto-type bean they called a Dutch bean that her grandmother had always grown. Though my mother made a face that I'm pretty sure she didn't love it but my granny obviously did, and it fed my mother all the same. I suspect my great-grandmother Biggie, when she fled Port Gibson, Mississippi for Youngstown, Ohio in 1913, brought with her some seeds with which to create the garden she fed everyone from. We are all made of these stories even if we do not know them. People saved these seeds because they loved these seeds, and they thought we might love them too, despite, and it's crucial we remember this, those people sometimes having just barely survived a drought or a famine or being rounded up on a forced march or put into the hold of a ship of hell. Whoever saved the seed loved us before they knew us. And some of them loved us as their world was ending. Our gardens archive that love. All of which is why I bristle at the idea of gardening as an act of self-sufficiency and independence. I get the premise, for instance, gardening makes us less reliant on the industrial food system that is brutal in 1,000 ways. Growing what you can't buy is awesome. Knowing where your food comes from and how it's grown is lovely. Sticking it to Walmart is fun. <laughs> but a garden, a healthy garden anyway, shows us no matter how hard you try, no matter even your fleet of spaceships, you will never be self-sufficient or independent because nothing living is. As the writers and ecological stewards Vandana Shiva and Robin Wall Kimmerer teach us, to be among the living, to be life, means to be, means to be in dependence, always and forever, whether you like it or not. It means whether you like it or not, you are the beneficiary of a largesse so large and so deep, you will never in one lifetime get to the bottom of it. Glad to be here with you. Thank you. 
for sharing this time and space with me and being interdependent with me. Interdependence is one of those core values proposed by the Article II Bylaw Commission uh, in the revision of the UUA bylaws, um, by, which is the UUA, which we are a part, an association of congregations. We've been talking about these revisions all year and as the theme for each month. So this month, we're talking about interdependence, and that's why we have a tree of interdependence. Since we began talking about all of this, there have been two additional values added, which uh, are peace and reason. So if you're interested in learning about those values, because they haven't been in our monthly themes and they're not going to be, you can see about them on the UUA's website or email me and I can send you a link with more information. The vote to accept the proposal with or without these amended values will be held this June at General Assembly. It's all online, so you can attend anywhere from any place that you can have internet connection. Okay, so now we're talking, done talking about the business, blah, blah, blah. Let's get back to the value of interdependence. This value comes directly from the seventh principle. We affirm and promote the respect for the independent web of all, ex interdependent web, thank you, of all existence of which we are a part. This seventh principle was added to our principles in the bylaws in 1987, and we haven't modified them since then, which is why we're working on it now. The current proposed value is interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence with reverence for the great web of life and with humility, we acknowledge our place in it. And we covenant to protect the earth and all beings from exploitation. We will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutuality and justice. We will work to repair harm caused to damaged relationships. The beautiful part of this value and its covenant is that it's much more active than the seventh principle. We're covenanting not just to respect the earth and our place in it, but to actively work to repair the harm of an unbalanced relationship with the earth and with other people. We aren't just thinking about how we are interconnected between you and me, but how we are covenanting to recognize, honor, and act accordingly to the reality that we are truly interdependent. We are all connected by an invisible string, a string of love, a thread of more than that, though, we're connected by the thread of interdependence. From the time of my birth, I have been dependent on the work of other people, the work they did to earn money, the work that they did to love and care for me, the work of so many others. We're dependent on the work of farmers who plant and grow and harvest the food we eat, the folks who bring it to the farms, to the factories, from the factories to the stores, the workers who unload the food at the stores and sell it to us, that's just a fraction of the number of people we're dependent on. All of the people who make it possible are more than I can possibly name in a sermon, let alone a whole month of sermons. We are dependent on each other for so much. We are dependent on each other to keep our church going as Gail reminded us during the stewardship campaign, we are a self-funded organization. If you weren't here, we wouldn't be here. But more than that, we depend on each other for having fun. We depend on each other for great food, for friendships, for care. We depend on each other to hold each other's babies when they're crying, to hold each other 
during a time when we need to find a silver lining and hope for a better world, we are here to hold each other. We depend on one another. Bishop Desmond Tutu uh, wrote, one of the sayings in our country is about um, Ubuntu. I can't say it right, I'm gonna practice. Ubuntu, which is the essence of being human to him. It speaks particularly about the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about our interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself. And when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you're known for your generosity. We think of ourselves far too frequently just as individuals separated from one another Whereas you are connected, and what you do affects the whole world. When you do it well, it spreads out. It's for the whole of humanity. In this congregation, more than any other I've been a part of, y'all embody this idea of Ubuntu. We aren't individuals in isolation from one another. We are a community that cares about one another, a community that welcomes newcomers with enthusiasm and embraces that we all are here. We are all needed to make things go. We are happy to jump into the classes with our kids downstairs. We are happy to dig our hands in the dirt, pulling weeds. We are excited to play instruments and sing together. We show up. Reverend Victoria Safford writes about Douglas Steer, a Quaker teacher who says, that ancient question of who am I inevitably leads to a deeper one. Whose am I? Because there is no identity outside of relationship. You can't be a person by yourself. To ask whose am I is to extend the question far beyond that little self-absorbed self and wonder who needs you? Who loves you? Who are you accountable to? To whom do you answer? whose life is altered by your choices? Whose life, whose lives is your own all bound up with inextricably or in obvious or invisible ways? That was all a quote by Victoria Safford. So whose are you? You are your own, no doubt about that, but you belong to a long history of ancestors by birth, by adoption, by choice. Whose are you? Are you a person of this land? Are you a traveler? Are you lost? Whose are you? Do you belong to a people? Do you belong to a nation? Do you belong to a global society? Whose are you? Do you belong to a religion, a society, a number of kindreds? Whose are you? Do you belong to the universe, to a God, to the earth? Whose are you? Are you loved by someone you never knew as they grew gardens to feed their immediate families? They captured seeds to pass down among the generations, feeding your hearts, your family, as Ross Gay said in our reading, whoever saved the seed loved us before they knew us. And some of them loved us even as their world was ending. Our gardens archive that love. Where do you fit in an archive of love? Are you archiving love for those who come after us? As Roske 
said in the reading, writers and ecological stewards, Vanna Shiva and Robin Wall Kimmerer teach us to be among the living, to be life means to be in dependence, always and forever, whether you like it or not. It means wherever you go, whether you like it or not, you are the beneficiary of a largesse so large and so deep, you will never in one lifetime get to the bottom of it. We are the beneficiaries of all the love and work and passion of those who have come before us. We are also those who add to this largesse. What do you, how, how do you love now that will make the world what it is for generations to come? In other words, what seeds do you pass down Seeds of compassion, seeds of justice, <laughs> seeds of common humanity. What can you do now that will show your love, your largesse to the generations to come? People you haven't met and probably never will. In this first installment of our monthly theme of interdependence, we talked about how interdependent we are here at church and in our families and how we're tied together as people. Next week, we will look towards the way that we are interconnected with all life on earth, including the environment, and ask ourselves important questions about the climate crisis. There's a lot more coming on this, and I think you'll want to come every week to find out. And on the last Sunday of the month, we will be celebrating Flower Communion, which shows us once again how we are all needed to make this world beautiful together. So now, here's your homework. No, I won't be grading it or collecting it, but I want you to go home and think about it. When you were born, who was the oldest person to hold you? What year were they born? Now think of the youngest person that you've hold, held recently. And when they were born. And calculate what year it would be if they lived to be the age of the oldest person to hold you when you were born. The oldest person to held me when I was born was 87 years old. She was born in 1894, and she lived to be 99 years old. The youngest person I've held was born in 2023, and if he lived to be 99 years old, it would be the year 2122. That's a span of 227 years between those dates. Think of all the lives that happen in 227 years. All of the change, all of the love, and all of the interdependence. Let's make this world work for us. Amen. I invite you now to rise and put your spirit for our closing hymn, the oneness of everything in the teal soft cover hymnal number 1052.
preparation for our closing, reach out to those around you if you are comfortable doing so. If not, hold your arms to yourself as we join together. When you go, remember you are interconnected with all that is. When you go, go in peace. Salam and shalom. Leave this place knowing that you are good and knowing that you are loved. Blessed be. Take your dark and your light and your love from this place, share them with the world, and stay safe until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy coffee hour and conversation. And have a great week.